In this video, I show you how to recover and enhance highlight detail in your RAW files with Affinity Photo. If you find this video useful or interesting, then please like and subscribe. Let's start by opening a RAW file. So file, open, and I think my little puppy will do. This is a pretty well exposed image overall, except if you look at the highlights here in the white fur, they're blown out. Complete patches of white in various places in the highlights of the fur. If we zoom in, we can see that we have no detail whatsoever in the most exposed parts of the image. But if we just bring down the exposure, we can see that the detail does actually exist. The detail in the fur is actually there, and it's our job to try to retrieve that detail to recover it. I'll just reset the exposure and zoom out. And we'll have a look at using Affinity Photo's highlight recovery tool in the shadows and highlights section here. The highlight tool tries to recover the highlight detail whilst avoiding affecting the exposure of the rest of the image. If we just pop this open and bring down the highlight slider, as you can see, the highlights are no longer blown out and we have detail in the fur. Let's zoom in to take a look. It has done a very good job of recovering the fine detail. Not bad at all. It has done a pretty good job, but now it all looks just a little flat. We seem to have lost some contrast in the fur and it all looks quite washed out, which isn't exactly great. And I think we can do better. Let's have a go. We'll close this down like so and open the project again for a nice clean start. Let's hit develop to exit the develop persona, but keep the image. And then our first job is to duplicate the raw layer. Right click and select duplicate. Now, as this is a raw layer, we can just double click the layer to bring us back into the develop persona. And from here, we can start the process of highlight recovery. The first thing we want to do is bring up the clarity. Clarity slider to max. As you can see, we've increased the detail everywhere. But if we zoom in, you can see we still have blown out highlights. Next, we bring down the exposure to reveal the highlight detail. Not too far enough so that we can see the detail, but we're not too dark. I found that not much under minus 1.5 seems to be the sweet spot. And now we can see all of that lovely detail hidden in the highlights. Very nice. Now, if we take a look at the whole image, we can see that it's all been darkened and it all has clarity. Never fear, Affinity Photo has the tool to fix this. Let's just exit the develop persona and enter the mysterious world of blend ranges. With our top layer still active, we just select this little cog to bring up the blend options. Let's just move this out of the way. The blend options allow you to mix the currently selected layer with the layers underneath, dependent on the luminosity from black to white. Horizontal for the luminosity range and vertical for the opacity. What we want to do is to reduce the opacity in the darker colors by bringing the black point here from fully opaque to transparent. I found it works best on this right side, the underlying composition ranges rather than the source layer ranges and then just bring the point across. We're looking for the point where the darker colors are back to their original luminosities. And these darker areas here are back to their original brightness. 
For most images, as in this case, around here is just fine. Yep, and as you can see straight away, if we just zoom in, we have our highlight detail and the rest of the image is back to its original brightness and clarity levels. I think we've done a really good job of recovering the highlights and it doesn't look flat. Now, if we want to refine this a little bit, what I suggest we do is just to make the transition between the dark and the light smoother is to add a point here, bring it down, uncheck linear, a little tweak, and then just to enhance the highlights a little more, we'll just add a point in here, then adjust the point to make a little curve. And I think we're done. That looks pretty nice, I think. Let's take a closer look. That looks great. Lots of detail. Now you may think the effect is overdone a little bit too much. If so, then it's a very easy fix. Let's just shut this down. Then double click on our layer again to bring ourselves back into the develop persona. We'll just zoom in so that we can see what we're doing, then bring down the clarity. Just set the clarity level to the point where you think it's most appropriate for your image. Let's just zoom out for an overall view. At maximum, it looks great, but maybe a little bit too much. Let's just bring it down to more realistic, and that looks really nice. Let's take a look at before and after. This is the original image with the blown out highlights. And this is the image with our highlight recovery applied. I think you'll agree it's a pretty good effect. So let's do before and after. Before and after and before and after. Okay, here we have another image, and as we can see, the sky is quite light and washed out. Not so much blown out. I don't think we're actually clipping. If we are, it's very little. But we definitely have a lack of detail in the sky. Let's have a look at how Affinity Photos Highlight Recovery would deal with this. And as we can see, it's there. It's done something, but it's quite flat. It hasn't enhanced any detail. Let's turn that off and have a go with our method. So develop, and then duplicate the layer, double click on the layer to get us back into the develop persona, over to the clarity and set to maximum. Right away, we can see we have detail in the sky. Then down with the exposure, I'll set it to 1.5 as that seems to be the sweet spot and a good starting point. Then hit develop. Next, open up the blend options. Move this so we can see, then bring the left hand point down and into a good position. We want to move the left hand point into a position where the darker colors are not really affected or not much. So let's just have a play around. And I think around here is fine. Create the smooth gradient transition point. And now at the top point to slightly enhance the highlights. As I move this point, you should be able to see we're getting more definition in the highlight areas. I don't want to go too far or clip really. So about there will do. That's fine. Okay, let's take a look. Very nice. Before and after. And before and after. Lovely. We've gained a lot of detail. That's looking really nice. So let's just 
pop back into the develop persona on our adjustment layer and apply a couple of tweaks. First of all, as this layer isolates and affects only the highlights, we can apply some saturation to the sky with one slider. And we quickly get a little more blue in the sky, a little added bonus of using this method. Then let's just check the exposure. If we can bring it down a little bit, we may be able to enhance the detail in the sky a little more. Yep, that's looking good. Okay, let's go back to our layers so that we can take a look, a little comparison before and after. Very nice. While we're here, let's just add one little adjustment to make the image look nice. Adjustments levels. Bring down the whites, the white level. And I think that looks really good. A really colorful image with a very well-defined sky. And here we have a picture of a wedding dress by a window where the window is completely blown out. Now that may be the look you're after, but for the sake of this experiment, for the demonstration, let's fix it. Hit develop, right click, duplicate, double click on the new layer, then up with the clarity, and then bring the exposure down until we see lots of lovely detail in that overblown window. And look at that detail. This image was taken on a little Sony a6000 camera and it still has a lot of detail hidden in the highlights. Very nice. It really is great to know that we have some options for recovery if our exposure hasn't gone quite to plan. Let's take a look. Okay, it's pretty dark, so we'll just up the exposure a little bit. I find that 1.5 seems to be that magic number. And hit develop. Then with our layer selected, blend options. Bring the left point to the sweet spot. And that's looking really good. Lovely. If we take a look at before and after, we've recovered lots of lovely detail. So I'll just bring this left a little bit, put the blend curve in to smooth out the transition. Then create our top point to try and enhance the highlights a little. That's nice. And bingo, we're done. Very nice. Let's zoom in to take a look. Lots of lovely detail in the window where there wasn't before. We go before and after, before and after.